We begin today by reminding ourselves that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us in the Quran to have taqwa of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, O you who believe, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ittaqullah, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that is in order even for the people of Iman. So even when you're a person who has reached the level of Iman, Allah has still ordained upon us to have taqwa and to increase in that, as is the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, imagine today we are Muslims, alhamdulillah. But we cannot say for sure we are people of being mu'minun. We hope. We have this hope from Allah that we are from the mu'minun and we ask Allah to make us from them. But as the Bedouins, the Arabi who claimed that they had Iman, Allah told them, no, you've only entered the fold of Islam. So we don't make false claims. We do say we're Muslim, alhamdulillah. And we strive and struggle to be from the people of Iman. But even if you reach the level of Iman, when you reach to being from the people of Iman, even then, it doesn't mean you become complacent. You still have to strive and struggle and work to make sure that you reach higher levels. As in the ayah that I recited, and I'll tell you, keep having taqwa. Ya amanu, ittaqullah, haqqa tuqati, until it's the right that you reach the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with taqwa. And even when you reach that high level, already referring to the people of Iman, getting to the level where is the haqq of Allah having taqwa, he says, die not except in a state of being a Muslim. Meaning even then you have to worry, am I going to die as a Muslim even? We don't become complacent, okay, alhamdulillah, my father, my grandfather is Muslim, my generation will be Muslim, no. You have to strive and struggle, why? Because my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, what's at stake is that important. Our akhirah, the hereafter, an ever, land, ever, ever living life with no end is at stake. When people die on kufr, when people die on shirk, then the destination is such, it's so horrible, that it's something that nobody can bear. In dunya, we take it very easy. You know when we're speaking to each other, sometimes you tell somebody, Akhi, these people there, they're kuffar. He said, what does that matter? That's their business. You tell somebody, Akhi, somebody's worshipping qubur, they're doing shirk. They tell us, so what? Oh, their grandfather did it. And when we say no, we have to stand on the haqq. We have to draw that line of halal and haram, of tawheed and shirk, of sunnah and bid'ah. Sometimes people tell us you're extreme. You're this, you're that, you're Wahhabi, you're this, they throw titles at you. But we don't believe in any of that sectarianism. We believe in the kitab and the sunnah and the way of the salaf al-ummah. Because that is the only way to Jannah, is the way of Tawheed. You cannot enter Jannah with Shirk. Jannah is a place of purity. And the Nar, the Hellfire, is the place for the people of filth. May Allah protect us from it. When we look at the concept of dunya and life, we don't realize that this is a test. That yes, earn money, have a nice house, have a family. Allah didn't deprive you from these things. We're not people who say, okay, khalas, you can't enjoy dunya, you have to sit in a mountain and just and you starve yourself. No, alhamdulillah, that's not our religion. Umar ibn Khattab radiyanhu, once he saw when they conquered the areas in Sham, he saw a rahib, somebody who was yani a, a, a priest who had dedicated himself just to worship. So he saw him that he used to lock himself up a tower and he would eat very little and he wouldn't speak to anybody. People would just bring him food and he never married. He never intermixed with people. He lived a life 
Yani where, where you would say that he didn't enjoy anything in life. Umar Radiyan started crying. The people said, look, Umar became affected by this Christian. Umar Radiyan said, no, that's not why I'm crying. I'm crying because he destroyed his dunya and his akhirah. <laughs> in dunya, he didn't enjoy anything. But it didn't benefit him in the akhirah. He'll still be in the nar because the mushrik. He didn't say, no, no, we'll do an interfaith panel and we'll hold hands and it's okay, you know, and we'll tell him you're okay and I respect you. No, he was straight. And this is why they were successful, the Sahaba radiyanhum. And this is why they're our role models. And this is why we want to follow their footsteps. Because what's at stake is no joke. This is, I'm being real with you. You know, it's not like, you know, where you, where you lose a turn or where you fail a test and you can retake it. No, if you die, that opportunity to earn everlasting bliss and be saved from everlasting torment is over. So right now, all of us sitting here that are alive, Alhamdulillah, you have that opportunity. You can make those decisions, right and wrong. You can come to the masjid and make salah, you can fast, you can, you can pray in the night, you can read Quran, you can earn the akhirah with the mercy of Allah. But when death comes, then that opportunity ceases. May Allah protect us if somebody dies on shirk and kufr. Then the punishment that they go to is such that is unimaginable. You know in dunya you tell somebody, be patient, don't deal with riba. Be patient, don't go and hit the clubs. Don't drink, don't smoke. Don't vape, don't do balloons or whatever else nonsense is out there nowadays. And some people tell us, I can't. I can't be patient, I can't wake up for fajr, it's too hard. I can't give up smoking, it's too hard. I can't be patient. But then, how will they be patient on the nar? When you have no choice then, is this patience in dunya harder than that punishment in the nar? And Shaykh Abdurrahman Nasir al-Sa'di, the great mufassir and scholar of Quran, teacher of Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen, he said the harshest ayah in the Quran upon the people of the Nar is فُدُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا That go and taste that punishment and nothing will happen except that it will increase upon you. Subhanallah. Allahumma na'awdha bika min al-Nar. Think about this. You know, in dunya, any punishment you have, you'll get used to it. Any hardship, you get used to it. Somebody puts you in prison and locks you, it'll be hard for a while, and then after a while, any khalas, you become tough. Somebody burns you for a while, after a while, your, your, your skin burns off, you don't feel that anymore. Your pain receptors go away. If nothing else, death will end it. Any hardship, cancer, may Allah protect us all from these things. But death will end that pain. But imagine a punishment when there is no death. When there is no end to it. A punishment that will only increase every day. Forever and ever. And that is why my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah protect us all from it. We have to take it serious. This khutbah, this warning, this tathkirah, today should wake you up. It's not just some tradition we go through. It's not just some practice that we kind of run through. And we sit there looking at our watches and our phones to see what time we're going to get out and start thinking what we're going to do. No, this is a tathkirah, this is a reminder. So you have no excuse that death is coming, that Jannah is there, and Anar is there. And this is your time to make the right decisions. 
my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, it's not easy. When you're out there with a beard and a thawb and making salah and saying no to drugs and alcohol and haram and when, when people want to do bid'ah and you say no, I don't care if it's cultural, it's not in the Quran, it's not in the Sunnah, it's not the way of the Salaf al-Ummah and you say no and people boycott you and families and I know, I go through it. When you go to work and I mean I work a regular job, I know. But I'm telling you, it's a lot easier than that hellfire. It's a lot easier than that punishment of the grave. It's a lot easier you fix it here than on the day of judgment. So it's time to wake up from our sleepwalking lives and make the deen our top priority. When there are lectures, when there are halaqat, make it a priority. When it's time for salah, make it a priority. When haram and halal are offered to you, think of that akhirah in front of you. And to protect us from the hellfire in a practical sense, because there's a lot of talk, you know, we have a lot of lectures, we have a lot of talks and khutub, but, but what can we take out of it practically? I want to mention a beautiful hadith that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu has reported. Imam al-Tirmidhi has mentioned in his jami' through a few different narrations. And Shaykh al-Bani, he graded it to be sahih. Ibn Hibban and others also authenticated it. And it's come through a few different chains so I'm going to mention them in like a, like a comprehensive manner. But it's authentic narration. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he asked the Sahaba radiyanhum, should I not inform you of who the nar is haram for him and he is haram on the nar? Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen, he explains this hadith, he says, what does that mean? It means that he will not be burnt by the nar. Such a person who has these qualities that I'll mention, will not be burnt. And even if he was to step on the fire, the fire couldn't burn him. The fire of nar, the hell fire, cannot come on him and burn him. And if he was upon it, even then, it could not harm him. It is haram on him and he is haram on the nar. And that's the, the qadr of Allah, the power of Allah. You know, in a separate hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah has made it haram on the nar to eat or to burn or to harm the places where you made sujood. You know, when you make sujood in salah, your head, your hands, your knees, your feet are touching the ground. Even though the nar is more powerful than a million nuclear weapons. It's more, it's, it's unimaginably harsh. Nothing in dunya compares to it. The fire of dunya is just an example for us. But even then the power of your ibadah is stronger than the nar. That Allah has put that power. That the places of sujood cannot be burnt by the nar. But going back to the hadith that we were talking about. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about who is haram upon the nar. And the nar is haram upon him. He is protected from the nar and, and he, he cannot be harmed by it. Who? Whether it's a man or woman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave some qualities. And like I mentioned, in some of the narrations it mentions three of them, sometimes four. I'll mention all of them. Qareeb, he is somebody who is close with the people. He doesn't make himself distant from the people. You know, subhanAllah, today, when we are together as a community, we live together, alhamdulillah, somebody starts making money, immediately they want to move out. They want to move out away from people. And they want to put gates down. And now you got to make an appointment. And now, you, now he's too busy for you. Now he's going to go hang out with the Goras and doesn't want to be with the community. Why? Because he made some money. Moved on up. 
But look at, I mean, I mean, subhanallah, even the khulafa, who were the leaders, the kings, in the sense of being the leaders of the ummah, they would walk around. Umar radiyan would walk around, meet the people, lay his sword on a tree and take a nap, go at night and walk around and see what's going on. Like that was the leadership that made us successful. Not today where as soon as somebody becomes a leader, khalas, you won't see them anymore. Other than for appearances and you know, little waving hands and stuff. No, the quality. I mean, and, and I'm not just talking about kings and millionaires and stuff, even us. Somebody gets a good TikTok channel or something, khalas, now he thinks he's stuck up. Who are you? Just a regular person. Today you're known, tomorrow you won't be. So to be close to the people, to be easily accessible. Qareeb. Hayyan, layyan. These are two. Somebody of gentle character who is soft in his dealings. Gentle. Today some people, they're like, yani, like an like a electric cord, you know, that's, that's cut. Anytime you go by them, they're going to harm you. Hey, you look at them, they're angry. I walked into a masjid, not here, another country, another place, not going to mention the name. First thing, brothers look at you angry. Then second thing, do you follow this shaykh or that shaykh? What? Wa alaikum salam, brother. <laughs> just walked in, you just make salam, I'm good man, I can talk to you. They want you to return your salam. Some place you go, you say, Ameen, oh man. It's as if you offended their mother. You know. Even though this is from the Sunnah. There's a Bab in Al-Bukhari. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the Yahud, what is this? this is the quality of the Yahudi. That they're jealous of you, that they hate for you for two things, Salam and Ameen. So if somebody says Ameen and it offends you, go hang out with your little Kufi guys. I mean, always angry, always upset. No. Be gentle. Be soft. Smile. Meet your brothers. Even if we disagree on something, it doesn't mean we're not brothers. Even if we have a business dispute, doesn't mean we're not brothers. Doesn't mean we can't have good akhlaq. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to have the best akhlaq even with the worst of people. Even with the worst of people. And Sahlin. So Qareeb, Hayyanin, Layyanin, Sahlin. Four things we should now, from this khutbah, bring into our personalities. Be down to earth, mingle with the people, be patient, have good mannerisms, have a soft personality. You know, if somebody tells you, sit down, sit down. Somebody tells you, move, move. What's it gonna kill you? Man tawadu lillah rafa'au. Whoever humbles themselves for Allah, Allah will raise their ranks. Don't think acting stuck up and being like, uh, uh, is gonna get you somewhere. And be easy with the people. You know, you have an Amir, you have an Imam, he tells you, let's do it this way, it's okay. If it doesn't work out, alhamdulillah. In the end, when you are gentle, and when you follow, and when you have the Shura, and you have an Amir, whatever happens is the best. You never know. So when we bring these qualities into our life, then that hellfire becomes haram upon us. Obviously, with tawheed and amal salihat as being prerequisites. So inshallah, I hope that this as a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam, that life is short and we honestly don't know when this life will be over. Today, you're going to go out, may Allah protect you all. You could get hit by a truck, you could get, fall in your bathroom, have heart failure, whatever. You never know. You have no guarantee. 
The guarantee is Kullu nafsin maut. That every soul shall taste death. That's the guarantee. Will you live to tomorrow? No guarantee. And that hellfire is nothing to play with. It's nothing to joke with. It's nothing to ignore. And that Jannah is so beautiful, it's nothing to miss. An everlasting life, a life of bliss and happiness, a life with no disease, a life with no end, a life with no death, and best of all, a life where you get to see Allah. Where you see your Rabb, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What can be more valuable in this dunya? What temptation could be worth losing that? So we hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that from this khutbah, we will bring those four characteristics into your life. And when I walk around, I'm going to ask you guys at random, what were those four? Huh? Qareeb, Hayyan, Layyan, and Sahlan. To be close to the people, down to earth as we would say, mild-mannered, soft with the people, and easy-going. All things of good akhlaq. So we hope that all, all of us will bring this into our life, and I hope for myself to work on that myself first, and my brothers and sisters after me. وَقَوْلُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ